Hello there, I'm Bob the Fool, and today, uh, instead of doing normal video game stuff, uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to paint the skin of one of these guys. It's a grot or goblin. See? You can't really see them because it's not focusing. Uh, can I get you to focus on him? Nope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. I got plenty of other things focusing on them in a minute. Now, uh, these are little miniatures I use for wargaming or for D&D uh, games like that. And I would love to go out and show you guys how to prime them, because priming them is honestly one of the most important steps, getting a good prime job down. Uh, the problem comes down to this is what it looks like outside for me. <laughs> um, as if you don't know, you should always prime things outside because of the fumes. Uh, they will build up and cause brain damage. So you want to be in a very well ventilated area or outside in order to prime things. And you have to be within room temperature still. So all of the snow is not helping anything. Not even a little. Luckily I had some stuff primed beforehand. Um, so, as soon as the weather picks up here and gets nicer, I'll show you guys how to do that. Until then, uh, let's carry on. As you can see here, I'm going to be using Citadel paints. The first paint coat I'm going to be using is War Boss Green. Uh, I was trying to get it to focus on to the letters, but wasn't really having a good time of that. Um, before you use any type of these uh, acrylic paints, you want to shake them up and make sure they're nice and liquidy before you actually try to put them down on your palette. Um, here I'm trying to show that I'm getting the paint off uh, with a really old brush of mine uh, so I don't really care if the bristles get uh, ruined in the pot because they're already pretty ruined to begin with. And I'm just going to water down this paint coat a little bit. Um, as always, whenever you're using any tools, even something just trying to get the paint off of it, you want to just kind of shake it off in so a clean pot of water, and then just dry it off right away on a piece of paper towel. Remember to close your pots uh, in between painting, otherwise your paint can dry in the pot. Now, the Lear paints by Citadel are pretty interesting because they're pretty uh, light to begin with. They're a little bit see-through. Adding in that water is going to add up, adding a little bit more see-throughness to it. So, uh, as you're watching me paint a couple of these grot right here, you're going to notice that you can kind of see the paint job, the uh, primer, through the paint job. If you're getting thin coats like this, uh, just go ahead and do a second coat over it. It's actually better to get thin coats with your base coats, so that way you don't have to worry as much about if you get your color over onto a different area you don't want to be that color. It won't uh, cause any raised bumps in that area of the paint job. Uh, also you don't have to worry about it gunking up or covering up any of the small details on the models like the eye sockets in the face or teeth or anything like that. Hopefully I can get my hands to stop being in the way so that way you can actually see what I'm painting. <laughs> um, this is my first time doing this, so I apologize for the bad camera work. I'm trying to figure out how to get that to work out maybe a little bit better next time. But as you can see, I'm just kind of doing this all over. I'm using a medium base, Citadel medium base brush. It's just to make this job a little bit faster on these tiny small goblins since most of them are pretty much just skin. As you see here, I'm just going to go straight on and do my paint up my next goblin. Uh, this is what is known as batch painting. Basically, I'm going to take this one coat of paint and kind of go through all ten of these goblins to try to do them in a like a assembly line type fashion. So I'll paint all of them with this color. Uh, I will then do a second layer on all of them and then I'll move on to the next color after that. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint up these ten and I'll see you guys once I'm done. As 
As you can see here, our next color is going to be Elijah Green. As always, make sure to mix up the pot and then put it on your palette and water down with just a little bit of water. Well, our plan here is we're going to be using this color to layer onto the major muscle groups of the grot in order to highlight those areas. I'm personally only going to be doing one layer, but if you want to have a much richer, darker color of, uh, of this color, feel right ahead. I just like having a little bit of the uh, Warboss green show through underneath. For this, I'm going to be using a small layer brush just to keep a little bit extra control over the models that I'm painting. As you can see here, I'm just highlighting just the muscle groups. I'm trying to avoid any areas that I think are going to be deeper or darker. Um, once again, a little bit of shoddy camera work, but nothing I can really do about that at this point. Make sure that you're getting the tip of the ears along with the nose and the uh, lips as well uh, on your goblins. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and paint up the 10 goblins I've pulled out, and we'll get back and I'll see you again at the next step. For our next step, we're going to be using our Theron Camo Shade. Shade washes are really interesting. Uh, I highly recommend trying to play around with them. Basically, they're super watered down paints that will just seep into the deep inserts and cracks in your models and make those areas darker. Now, you do have to be a little bit careful with them as you can go overboard with this and make areas too dark. So in order to help control that, we're just going to wipe our brush off on the palette a little bit. I've gone back to my medium base brush for this, and I'm just going to do an all over wash on certain areas. If you feel like the areas have pulled up a little bit too much, just wipe your brush off on a nearby paper towel, or get any of the excess paint off onto the palette, and just go ahead and take some of the paint off of that area as this will take about half an hour to dry. Once again, I'm going to go on and paint my 10 grot up and once we're done, I'll see you there. Honestly, at this point where we got our grot, uh, you can see both highlights and lowlights from the washes, and you could realistically stop there. The next couple of steps are just some additional things that I like to do that give the skin a little bit more of a softened tone and lighten up a bit. Um, both these techniques are going to be using something called dry brushing, uh, which is basically you take one of these stiff bristle brushes, uh, Citadel actually makes things called dry brushes, and you get off a lot of the paint and clean it up on a piece of paper towel and just kind of softly go over it. You guys will see that in a second. I'll probably re-go over how to do that. Haha! -ha. Um, yeah, if you're super new to painting, perfectly fine of stopping here. Uh, if you don't want to try the dry brushing thing, not going to blame you. Honestly, everyone would probably be happy with the way that you've painted them anyways. Um, I just like to go one step further because I've been painting long enough that 
I have built up a certain expectation for how my models look in my head. So, For this we're going to be using the paint Skarsnik Green. Uh, once again we're going to just put a little bit on our palette and just wash it down with a little bit of water. Uh, just to make it a little bit extra see-through for this process. And as I said before, dry brushing is honestly a pretty easy process. What we're going to do is we're going to take my medium dry brush right there and we're just going to get a little bit of paint in the tips and just kind of use our paper towel to work it into the bristles and get most of the excess unneeded paint off there. After that, it's just a case of doing small circular motions over the entire model. This can get a chalky effect if used too much and too heavily, but I find that works perfectly great for the grot skin, since in the 40k lore there's supposed to be funguses anyways, so I'm fine with the skin looking a little bit more chalky than expected. As always, I have fantastic camera work. Uh, I'm slowly getting better throughout the process of doing this. The dry brushing is a very nice technique because what it ends up doing is it ends up picking out all the raised edges as long as it's doing a nice uh, coat over things. You can also know if you are careful with it and only going in specific areas, you can also get a nice kind of gradient effect over your models without having to buy something expensive like a airbrush to get the same thing. Um, but I'm going to go and dry brush my 10 models, and I'll see you guys in the next step. And for our final steps here, we're going to be using a little bit of Nurgling Green. We're going to do the same process as before for the dry brushing, just making sure you get all the excess paint off on a piece of paper towel. Uh, usually with the paper towels, they're ridged. You, uh, once you're getting just the ridges and not the recesses, it's probably a good sign that you're good to go. For this, we're just going to focus on the hands and face of the grot, just to try to lighten up that color a little bit. Now, I'm sure plenty of you guys are asking me, Bob, why did we go through the first three steps if we're doing these steps? We could have probably have just done a dark wash beforehand. And that is because I wanted to make sure to get what's called an undercoat on the grot skin. Uh, much like human skin, uh, it has several different tones in it. You have shades of red and brown within the shadows of your own skin. I wanted to make sure I could get some of those deeper off-color tones into the grot themselves in order to re reflect that they are a living, breathing creature. And so I'm going to go and finish off the 10 grot, and I will see you guys right after I'm done. So there you have it, that's how I paint the skin on goblins. Uh, if you're newer to painting, realistically the base coat is just fine. Most people aren't super critical of paint jobs uh, for the models, especially when you're newer to it. So just do what's within your own comfort level, and once you feel like you're ready for it, move on to one of the later steps. Uh, if you're, uh, for your first paint jobs and stuff like that, don't worry about mis uh, if you make any mistakes or being super careful or super uh, like precise on things. People understand if you're new to painting and won't bother you about it. Also, the uh, no one really has any expectations. I've gone to plenty of hobby shops in plenty of places where people don't even prime or paint their stuff. They're just the base model gray and you know what? That's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. You just want to build the models and go in and play the games. So paint to your own comfort level is my little thing I guess I'm trying to say. Hopefully you guys like this. If you want to see me paint more of these goblins or paint my other models, 
let me know down in the comments section. Um, otherwise, I'll probably just do this as a one-off to kind of fill in while I'm trying to get some other stuff kind of in the works and up and running. Anywho, uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I uh, hope you guys have a nice day, and you know what to do. Laters.